All right, we're back. We're live. We're here. Now, this is the time for the art of life, but Willow Chan can't make it today. So the show goes on. We step in, and we, we create uh, our video programs no matter what. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, you know part of Think Tech Talks. Um, and we're going to talk today about one of my favorite people and what she does, Donna Blanchard, uh, who is the uh, host on the uh, the... the Arts in Hawaii, at two to three on Wednesday afternoon, and uh, she runs Kumu Kuhua Theater right down the block. It must be like a hundred feet away from here, <laughs> and you know, so you don't see it that way, but that's the way it is. I want to talk about theater in Hawaii, and, and the reason is I'm really curious about theater in Hawaii, and because Donna knows everything about theater in Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> I know everything that I know about theater okay, in Hawaii. Okay, all right. Okay, th that's the that's the the container. <laughs> yeah. Okay. The first thing I want to, you know, is people, people don't know about theater. Theater is, uh, sorry about this, but it's kind of becoming a lost art. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we are surrounded with other kinds of entertainment, which we focus on and sub submit our intellects to that. And we don't, we don't touch theater as much as we used to, not as important to us. But I would like to sort of take a look at it with you today. So the first thing is, let's, let's get a handle on Kumu Kahua. Uh, what is it? Uh, how did it get organized? How does it work? What does it do? Tell me everything about Kumu Kahua. All right. Kumu Kahua Theater was started in 1971 by a group of grad students at the University of Hawaii who were studying playwriting. And I, I, somehow within this group, one of the members of the group was uh, Dennis Carroll, who um, is from Australia. And I've heard from Dennis before that Australia has native or host culture theater. Theaters where you can go and learn about lives within that geographical region. And that group of people decided that they wanted to start a theater that would be devoted to playwrights locally. Initially, it was playwrights locally. We have evolved into supporting both playwrights locally as well as playwrights who are writing about people in within this region, whether it be legends, all the way to we're running a Lee Cataluna show right now about no. very modern families. Sure, the, the, like like the Long Drugstore the play a few years Pumps ago, which is so very popular. She's great. Yeah, yeah. and the, the the beauty of what we do is that we are we are so very singular. Our mission is to so th this group that started back in 1971 eventually um, formed their own. A nonprofit organization separated uh, other than uh, nice working uh, partnerships, but we are not affiliated f uh, officially with the university anymore. Um, our mission is to encourage local playwrights and people who are writing about this region to produce those shows, to develop the actors and the other artists involved in the production of those shows and to develop the audiences who appreciate the work that we do or are sensitive to the work that we do and uh, we're very unique in that we do that we're, we're sculpting something that is so integral to um, to being alive I think to be able to go into a theater and see your life and your neighbor's life and learn something and experience. We're developing emotional literacy here. Emotional literacy. That's the first time I ever you, said that. You, That's good. You heard it here on Tic Tac. <laughs> <laughs> um, I really believe that. And, and theater of place or community, theater that is rooted in the community in this way is such a passion of mine. That is what brought me to Kumukuhua Theater. We also, uh, because we are uh, uh, responsible for developing a lot of new works, our shows tend not to be flashy. Uh, some of but our shows... Flashy, not flashy, what does that mean? Costumes, sets, no, you know, okay. we're a very simple black box theater, okay. and we don't try to pretend to be anything else. It's very rare that you will see a set that really resembles anything you've actually seen before. Right. Um, right. a, a lot of times, what, what we really offer is a theater that gives you an experience of audience and actor within a room together, experiencing what a playwright has written and a director and, and designers have 
sculpted, but it's all about the story. It's really all about the story. Wow, you know, that reminds me of a, a couple of things, okay? One is it reminds me of Kennedy Theater. Um, I, don't, I don't know if it functions anymore at the university. Uh, th th there is a Kennedy it's Theater a Kennedy right, right, right across from the uh, East-West Center. Mm -hmm. And back in the 60s and 70s, I used to go there, and they would have various things, including plays, but not only plays. And I wonder if that's, is that, is that where Kumu Kahua was originally that's operating? That's where we started. Okay, okay. You were there, Jay. I you was there. there. Wow. We all started. Wow. But, you know, but I, I really like the idea of you being downtown. I mean, that's important to me. Um, anyway, that's one thing that comes to mind. The other thing is, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm from New York. And the theater in New York is like part of the, is part of the place. Yeah. And um, everybody goes to the theater. Everybody goes to the theater. Everybody has always gone to the theater, and every man, woman, and child in that city goes to the theater, <laughs> <laughs> even though it now costs you know a hundred dollars and more just to get a seat in the balcony. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. I, I I told you I went to uh, this is some time ago, but I told you I went to a play and uh, I had forgotten how very close the seats were in those theaters back in, built in the, you know, the early part of the 20th century. Oh, yeah. uh, really close, and these red velvet seats, these are cushy, soft seats, really comfortable, and the guy next to you would be just an inch away, and you'd feel his elbow, and he'd feel your elbow, and by the end of the play, you got to know him. <laughs> and you got in conversations with people, and they shared thoughts and reactions to the play. It was like a community experience to go to the theater. <laughs> it is. You, you share more so than you do in a movie theater. Oh, yeah. And I think that in, intermission so, yeah. is very I integral in that experience, yeah. right? Because yeah. you're, yeah, you're, you're uh, elbow to elbow with them. You feel yeah. their body heat. You, you do. Know? You feel them breathing. And, yeah. I mean, breathing is a form of communication. It like is, that. and <laughs> chemicals are yeah flying yeah. around. Um, especially when you're in a theater as small as Kumukuhu is, you're breathing with the actors, too. Well, and the other thing that like, extends from that for me is that I went to a school in Greenwich Village. I wasn't a village hippie, but I went to school there, and I enjoyed the arts there. Okay, and there were fabulous places to go. This was in the 60s, which wasn't the 50s and Jack Kerouac and... You know, on the road was it? Whatever. Yeah. But but it was the '60s, and there was plenty of action in the village. And one of the one of the action points were these theaters. They were everywhere. Little tiny pocket theaters, theaters in the round, mm -hmm. theaters where you could you know where, where the actors spoke, and you'd be close enough to feel their spittle on your face. Mm -hmm. I mean, where you know you could really feel the breathing, um, you could feel the intensity of their you know their projected emotions. Uh, you could feel the play. You were drawn into it because you were there, just as you said, in the same room, in the same envelope, in the darkness, together, you and the actors. And I loved that, and I, and I think that's what you're talking about. Yeah, we're, I mean, we're electromagnetic machines, right? And just the same way, like a shark can be swimming in the water, and it it senses the uh, electromagnetic field offset by the seals swimming above it. We have we have the same basic makeup. We so when you're watching a film, and I love going to see films. That's one experience. But you're not in the room with, you know, any of those actors. When you're actually in the room with them, you it is a more on a cellular level. It's a different experience for you. It sounds like you went to a lot. Uh, you, you saw a lot of theater. I was just thinking, of just at random, of the Three Penny Opera. Mm -hmm. There's there's a play that ran for I don't know twenty years. Uh, there's a play that everybody was humming the, the music from, still still are, really. It's a play that was ingrained in the city culture, one play. Yeah. Uh, it was a statement of Greenwich Village. Um, and I think it's possible to do that with, with the right kind of play and the right kind of supportive audience. It becomes a forever kind of thing. Uh, but we don't have forever. We've got to take a break. So we're going to take a short break now. And then when we come back, you know, I... Uh, I want, I want to tell you more about my, my own experience in, in theater, okay? Oh, excellent. <laughs> wow. It's reliving theater. This is uh, Jay Fidel. Here we are at, uh, let's call it the Art of Life. It's the Think Tech Talks. Um, we're talking about theater in Hawaii with Donna Blanchard, the host of uh, the, art, the uh, uh, Arts in Hawaii on Wednesday. And we'll be right back after this break. 
moment to thank our underwriters. Hawaiian Electric Company and its affiliates Maui Electric on Maui and Hawaii Electric Light Company on Hawaii Island are deeply committed to the communities they serve. Galen Ho is a senior executive of BAE Systems, a global defense, security, and aerospace company. The High Tech Development Corporation, the state's leading technology agency, attached to the Department of Business, Economic Development, and Tourism. Castle and Cook Hawaii, with a time-honored legacy that spans more than 160 years and revolves around its mission of investing in Hawaii, creating communities, and providing for the needs of our state. Hawaii Gas, formerly the gas company, a proponent of the liquefied natural gas initiative, helping Hawaii achieve its transition to clean energy and a better energy future. Collateral Analytics, a Hawaii-based tech company empowering the real estate industry with greater and faster access to the tools and data they need to make better informed property investment decisions. I'm Nicole Horry. Thanks so much for joining us on ThinkTech. I'm Maria Kashem. See you next time. Today. Okay, we're back, we're live. That's Donna Blanchard, <laughs> host of uh, Think Tech's Art, uh, the, the Arts in Hawaii. And we're talking today about the art of life because uh, Willow Chang's not here. Um, and, um, and, and we're going to talk about the theater in Hawaii because that's Donna's favorite thing. And I wanted to mention another reaction I had, and that's this. And I mean, and you said it in so many words is Hawaii has this huge library of stories, this huge tradition, this, I mean, more than any place really that you can think of, because we, we inherit all of the cultural stories from all the cultures, and it's huge. Mm. And the only one in recent times that has, that has come up in the public eye, the national public eye, is, is the, uh, the Descendants, you know. And my reaction to seeing that was, okay, that's a pretty good movie. But what about the other million stories that we haven't told yet? Now you tell them at Kumu Kahua. Yeah. But you, you, you are tapped into that. But we should all be tapped into that because there are so many stories. And we should be making movies and we should you know, send road shows, whatever it is, to get our stories out. So you're holding the treasure trove over there, actually. We are. And you know, there, there are a lot of great filmmakers who a couple of whom I've had on my show who are m making some excellent films that are telling the stories of here and I uh, I can say that that information uh, those stories are being presented in really wonderful ways that are going to are going to speak to people on the continent and other other parts of the world more the more they continue to get made but I think the descendants was kind of a breakthrough movie because it was a, it was a conduit to the rest of us who hadn't really don't know this place this place is very different this place is very different yeah. and it doesn't feel as human beings everything that we go through is universal our reactions to stimulus around us is we share that however um, the way in which we tell stories is very different and if you are telling a story in a, in a way that is very foreign to me, then maybe I have my guard up or I'm not fully engaging with you. The thing that we, the thing that theater offers is, I feel that we are an important conduit because theater itself is not a Hawaiian form of art or storytelling, but it is, it is a, a traditional form of story, storytelling for most of the rest of the world. We have, but we have oral history here, right? Right. So I mean, a lot of the traditions in the Hawaiian culture were passed down by oral history. So theater, I, I know theater is not oral history, but it's not far either. Uh, and I think some of theater is, uh, you know, the telling of it. Huh? Uh, Disagree with me. I'm disagreeing with you, Jay. <laughs> I, so you know I love you, but I, I have to disagree with you and say that to, to, to recite and give us a narrative, to tell a story even in a very animated fashion That's not the is very different than being the story, living uh, the story, okay. reliving the story let, night after night on stage. It is, it's a different experience. And we have lots of people who are born and raised here who love to come to, come to Kuhua Theater, Kumu Kuhua Theater and support us, but it is, um, I think it is more important than ever that we uh, nurture those stories and those burgeoning playwrights. And we're doing more and more work 
getting into schools and encouraging kids to get involved in our playwriting contest and come to our classes and we're doing little satellite classes within the schools um, because you know our next step is to we do the plays here um, we don't have a big tourist audience we have mostly a local crowd and that's cool but eventually our plays need to go elsewhere we, we need to get the plays elsewhere, and it doesn't have to be our company doing it. And we're, we're working with Haile Opua Baker at University of Hawaii, and um, one of her students, Stephanie Keiko Kong, for her master's work, is cataloging all of our work that we're eventually going to get onto a website and make available to directors and theaters. Oh, elsewhere? I mean, in the state or in the country, or both? In the, well, we're going to hope for in the country soon. What about road world, shows? Right? What about you know, taking your, your cast? And moving them to Hilo and, and finding you know an acceptable venue in Hilo and doing the play. We do. We travel to Maui. Mm -hmm. We go to the Mac, mm -hmm. and we're talking with um, Kahilu Theater on the Big Island now. Oh, that's in uh, Waimea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that's where Richard Smart played. He created that. The owner of the Parker Ranch. Oh yeah. He was a thespian more than anything. He played on the stage in New York. He was a serious thespian, and he created this uh, Kahilu Theater, you know, for him, for himself, and to, the to play there in the yeah. well in the community. And they came, and there were plays there. I don't think there are plays there anymore regularly. Um, no, now it's more of a touring, yeah. touring house. Yeah. But uh, they're talking about bringing us in, you know. That's great. Bringing our work in there, and we would love to get to all of the islands. You know, we've got to have that but you know what? To you, do you know, what you're doing, I mean, this special, you know, library of, of stuff that you're developing, you know, you can't, can't give any of it up. You've got to keep it all and, and keep playing it, keep it alive. And um, I think after a while, Hawaii will find you. That's what I think. Um, because you, you are the living memory of so many things, mm -hmm. the living expression of all these cultural points um, that, you know, you become become more valuable every day people will see it I think so yeah. I think so you know when I knew when I came here that the theater was struggling but I also knew that they were only filling about half of their seats and it was uh, without even seeing their work just knowing who they are and what they stand for I knew up front that all we have to do is tell more people about this and they'll come across the threshold and once you come across the threshold you're going to want to come back and you're going to want to support it and you're going to want to get involved and you're going to want to take a class, write your own play. Everyone's got to play. Everyone's got to play. Write your own play, audition. Everybody's got to play inside himself. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Let's, can we talk about that? I, you know, I, I, I want to tell you, I was on play production in high school and my thing is that I, I had to get on the ladder go way up to the top and play with the bulbs up there and everything, the lights oh. and the curtains and all this. And, and they tested you. They, they wanted to see if you could actually go up one of those ladders. You know the ladders that looks like a, a Y upside down with a straight piece? Oh, <laughs> you know? So yeah. you, had a, you had a sort of a Y upside down and you had to climb all the way up to the top, put your leg over and then come all the way. And if you could do that, you could be on play production. <laughs> How'd you do? I you know, did it yeah, I, in those days. <laughs> but, I've done but, things on ladders for theaters that I never no, thought. No, 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 no. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's only for a theater with a big, you know, big high ceiling, and yeah. those are hard to come by. I mean, even, even the, what the Hawaii theater doesn't have that high a ceiling. Doesn't have a deep, a theater either, which makes it problematic for opera and that yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. But um, you know, I, the, uh, the the whole thing is. Um, People don't realize what it takes to, to get into the, the backstage. They don't realize what it takes to motivate somebody to, you know, to write or yourself to write. They don't know what it takes to be an actor and go out there and expose yourself you know, to flubbing it <laughs> in a very intense play mm -hmm. or any kind of play. Uh, and, and to you know, studying the lines, memorizing hours of copy, that's not so easy. Uh, engaging, you know, on an emotive basis every time, never losing, you know, the force of the message and all. Um, so how is it? You, you, you put this together. You actually bring all these people together and make this happen. Where do you start? What foot do you put out first? Well, hmm, Jay, the foot was put out a long time ago. 
In making and, a play. Yeah, I'll tell you what, if you say, we're going to have auditions and here's here's the show that we've got and this is the person who's going to be directing you know there's a few different but if i said i'm a nobody and i'm going to audition for a show some actors would show up for my auditions and then i say and i'm going to be doing a show written by lee cataluna alani epio some of these people who are known in um shakespeare <laughs> people more people are going to show up and i say and the director is going to be harry wong or Reiko Ho, some you know, just amazing, inventive directors. People are going to, actors are going to yeah, flood in. They know. They know. It's a community. They all know each other. And they want to. They want to get on stage. They, it's a privilege. It's to not get a matter of working. It's a matter of getting on stage. It's the matter pay, the of pay is not enough to, to you know. Oh, for God's sake, we don't pay people. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wish we could. There's only one island. There's only one theater on this island that pays their actors. HTY. Huh? Okay. HTY. Yeah. Oh, okay. They actually just get health benefits. Ah, okay. Fair That's enough. It's a big deal. Um, so we're all, the rest of us are all community theaters. And, um, I, you know, I, I can honestly say that the memorizing your lines is the easiest part. <laughs> Maybe for you. <laughs> that's, the, that's the easiest part. Figuring out what, why you are saying what you are saying what this relationship is. Why am I going to say this to you? What do I want? What's standing in my way? What are my obstacles? How important it is to me? Every word. It, the words are there. If you, as long as you understand you all of that. You have to interpret. But you can do it in your own way. So I mean, I, I know that the director will say, you know, <clears throat> Don, you have to you know, do this and do, you're trying to achieve this and that and let me put it in context for you. But you can make your own analysis too. What happens when your analysis is different than the director's analysis? You signed on to direct to work with that director. <laughs> you signed on to do that director's version of this script. Okay. So there's so the take what advice. they say goes. But you can you can say, uh, hey, you know, uh, I know what you said, but you know, can you look at it from my point of view? You know, I can can I convince you, you know, that it's, maybe it should be done this way instead. Do directors take that? It's no. <laughs> some, it depends on who you are, it depends on what you're talking about, but in general, um, actors need to, under, and I, I'm, I'm an actor and a director, so I can tell you from both sides, there have been plenty of times when I was working as an actor and I went, <laughs> I've been thinking about this character, you're thinking about all of them, I've been thinking about this character for a month now, and I think I should but I don't have the point of view that they do. The fact is that they are looking at a complete piece. And the director and, does that. And I can only see this. That's their job. Yeah. That's their job is to tell that story, yeah. utilizing all these little pieces, including the costume designer and the lighting technician, everybody. And you as an actor, you, you cannot have that perspective. Now, usually, um, I, I, as both an actor and director, have had those conversations before. They happen a lot. But you have to understand, when you audition for a show, you're coming to my audition, and I'm, I'm doing Tartuffe. You are doing Donna Blanchard's version of Moliere's Tartuffe. You're not doing Jay Fidel's version of nothing. <laughs> okay, all right, fair, okay, okay. I just need to get that sorted out, you know. Yeah. It's like, this is Think Tech. This is J. Fidel's world. <laughs> Thank you. Over there. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so now I want to be an actor, okay? Um, what, you know, can I be, can I walk over to Kumukuhu and say, Donna, you know, I want to be an actor. You know, and I, I'll really work to memorize all the hours of copy and script and whatnot. Um, how far am I away from being an actor at that moment? No experience. Zero experience. We've had people who, a uh, young man named Jeremy, um, I, I don't believe had ever been in a show before, came and auditioned for um, All That Remains last year and did a fabulous job, was cast in that show. Would you, would you agree with me that in, in everybody, or most, not everybody totally, but in most everybody, there is an actor? And you just have to reach him or her and bring that out, you know, the, this, this ability to connect with other people on a stage. And I, and I say that in, in, uh, after, after only a week ago attending this movie called, um, what was it, Captain Phillips, uh, you know, with um, Tom Hanks, 
and it was about a, a captain who had a ship off the Somali coast and was kidnapped by, you know, pirates, Somali pirates, okay? And the pirates were Somalis, they were African, and they were from Africa, and you knew very well that they were not professional actors. They were probably, you know, an inch away from the roles that they were actually playing. But they acted brilliantly. How is this possible? These people were not trained actors, and yet they're in a, an award-winning motion picture playing roles like that. So there's a couple of things that, that go into play there. One is you're talking film. So you, that, those roles can be portrayed in 30-second segments. And you mean you take a little piece, little piece, and then you edit, and then you lots of editing, and, and you can make it do anything you want. The directors and the editors have so much play in there. The director can say, even though um, this may have nothing to do with the actual a action of the movie, and I didn't see that film yet, um, but the director can say, I want you to run from there to there as though you just found out that someone manhandled your wife. So the actor thinks, okay, that makes me feel this way. I'm going to move that way because of it. It can have nothing to do with the film. But the director sculpted what you were doing to fit into the story that he's telling. Yeah, so he'll, he'll, he'll and indeed, that works. You want to have that, you want to have him respond to you or respond to the, that stimuli on yeah. the stage. Uh, and to touch people somehow. But when you get to theater, when you get to theater and you're doing the same thing night after night, you, what you need then is actors who can engage and think for themselves and be within that moment. And I will argue that it's not a matter of everyone having an actor that you reach in and find. I think it's everyone has an actor that they need to uncover. Because it's there. You just need to peel away the other okay. stuff. Okay. And those characters... It's like a therapy, isn't it? Indeed. It's meditation and therapy all at the same time. Now I know why you do what you do. <laughs> <laughs> That's Donna Blanchard. <laughs> she runs uh, the Arts in Hawaii on Wednesday as a host, and she's here today talking with me, Jay Fidel, about the theater in Hawaii. We wanted to sort of reveal her, peel away, peel away the, some layers. the layers, and find out who the real Donna Blanchard is. <laughs> we'll be right back after this break. Aloha. I'm Jay Fidel with ThinkTech. ThinkTech is a 501c3 Hawaii nonprofit corporation. We began ThinkTech in the year 2000. At ThinkTech, we work to raise public awareness about tech, energy diversification, and globalism in Hawaii. We do 20 live stream talk shows every business day, and we do a weekly TV show on OC16. We pay the bills with donations from our supporters. Won't you help us by making a donation? All you need to do is go to our website, thinktechhawaii.com, and click there on the Donate button. We hope that you like what we do and that you will support us and help us continue to do it. Thanks so much for watching and for helping. I'm Jay Fidel of ThinkTech. Mahalo. Friday is a happy day here on <laughs> ThinkTech. I'm so happy talking with Donna Blanchard, uh, the host of our uh, the Arts in Hawaii program on Wednesday, who is uh, standing in with me today to talk about theater in Hawaii because that's what she does here on uh, the Art of Life on Friday afternoon. Anyway, um, you know, a year or two ago, my wife and me, we went to uh, my wife and I. Thank you. Uh, we went. We <laughs> we went to Ashland, Oregon. And we thought that Ashland had a, a Shakespeare festival, and it does, but the, the theater in Shakespeare, you know, goes, goes, I mean, the theater in Ashland goes way beyond that. Uh, there's all kinds of plays going on. You, you can have your choice of, I think, two, three theaters operating all at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I'm thinking that that's an ideal thing for any community to be. You have to have certain elements in the community that will that will do that. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm wondering, you know, how far away we are. So hold that thought, and then let's enumerate what we have in this community that could lead to a community of theater. Okay, you mentioned before the Honolulu Theater for Youth, right? It's been around a long time. Re Louise Len Lancelotti, Sam King's daughter, uh, you know, started that, or at least she was the director of it a long time, and the kids love it. 
Um, they come, they come in buses all around to see what was going on. And the, and the plays are built for them, and it's very exciting to watch them. Yeah, and they travel to all of the islands. There are, uh, just about every child who grows up on any of these islands is exposed to theater because of that organization. Awesome. So, so you start as a kid, you know, it gets ingrained somehow. Mm -hmm. That's what you got to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I'm reminded, of, forgive me the, the far reach on this, but I'm reminded of Fumiko Wellington, who is a member of the orchestra. She plays violin, and she spoke of uh, her own youth here, um, where she learned music here in Hawaii, because everybody learned music here in Hawaii. Every kid, every little kid learned music. And then you have a musical community. And it could be the same way with theater, and maybe HTY is part of that yeah. process. Anyway, what else? Uh, there's the Shakespeare Festival every summer. They just finished the entire canon this year. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing where they go. I think they're going to do some non-Shakespearean works next summer. Um, they work in the Arts at Mark's Garage. There's the Actors Group which is um, by in the Dole Cannery area, and they do some, um, they tend to do some more cutting edge work. I, I think they're uh, a little more like, um, I'd compare them to Steppenwolf in Chicago because that's what I know to compare them to. Um, These that's are my knowledge base. These are off Broadway kinds of theater companies. Yeah, yeah they're small. They're little, and yes, oh yeah, they are. I think tag only seats like 60 people in their theater. Um, Mark seats maybe 80-ish. Hmm. Yeah. Um, there's Manoa Valley. Um, uh, they they've been around a long time. Bigger theater, money. Yeah. I think they produce. started about the same time as Kumukuhoi did. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. There's a generation. There's a generation that really made things happen with theater around mm -hmm, here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, theaters that are still going strong. Diamond Head is the oldest on the island, and I think they're 60-ish. I wonder around. if Diamond Head was originally created by the army when it occupied that that Diamond Head area. It was Fort Ruger there. That well, was a fort. And there was an army theater that closed down a few years ago. That, one, that was out uh, at, um, I forget, you know, there's another area, there's an army base in the middle, Port Shafter. Right. Yeah. There, w there was a theater there, and I used to go to plays there. Um, but the, I wonder, I wonder if the theater, because the theater building at, at Diamond Head is pretty old. And I wonder if the army originally built that. You know? Who knows? That is very cool to think that the, you know, U.S. military, um, had the vision to recognize the importance of theater in our lives. Yeah. And they created, you know, they had a real culture out here. They had stuff going on. And uh, they, they left it for us, kind of as a legacy gift. You know, unfortunately, yeah. the one at uh, Shafter never, never, you know, isn't around anymore. It didn't work out. Some of them are around. And there, there's also a theater in... Um, and maybe it's just a college theater in Leeward College, or Windward College, sorry. I don't know about Leeward. I went to a play there that was really very good. Yeah, yeah. I think they're doing Tartuffe right now, as uh -huh. a matter of fact. Uh -huh. I've heard very good things about Tartuffe. So when you start tallying them up, you get quite a few. Quite a few, and then there are, um, there are some groups that do reader's theater. What is, that? What is that? Just read the play. Yeah. You just read it, and it may be a staged reading. Uh, there may actually be some sort of movement that goes on with it, or it could be actors sitting reading with an audience that's just absorbing it in a different way. Mm. Uh, uh, and that really, really focuses on the words. So, okay, Oahu seems to have a certain tapestry of theater. I, I don't. Is it? I mean, where, where was your original experience on the mainland? In the Chicago area. Chicago area. I mean, would you say, based on your experience there, that we have, uh, uh, you know, a high intensity, a, a density of theater here, or are we behind the curve? Uh, no, I think that we're probably a little bit in front of the curve. You know what? I was actually I was in Northwest Indiana right before I came, and there's seven counties that make up the this region, which is the Chicago region of Indiana. And the population is almost exactly the same as this island, and the number of theaters is almost exactly the same, which I think, you know, it goes along with we have a lot of, 
institutions of higher learning and you tend to have a lot of you have theater within those institutions and then you get theater w without those institutions as well um, and I think that most of the theaters here are doing pretty well I go to a lot of shows. I try, I try to see as many shows as possible, and I sit in a lot of crowded houses. I'm very happy. Why do you go to see how see how it's done? See what they're doing? See how the other side is producing? <laughs> it's nothing about I'm not spying or I'm not you know looking at the competition or anything. You just I like, like it. theater. I like theater, and I wasn't raised that way. I, theater wasn't really how did you a part get of my youth. I just had to. I just my not ow said <laughs> you must do this. And I've told the story. The first time I saw a show, it was a professional production of, uh, oh my god, I can't believe it, Showboat. Showboat, okay. Showboat. An American classic. We, yeah, we were on vacation, and I, I was 10, and I, I wanted so badly to just run up on that stage and jump up, uh, and I wanted it so badly in my mind I was doing it, and at one point I remember catching myself and thinking, oh, I didn't really do it, did I? It was like being in a dream and you wake up and go, hey, but I didn't, it didn't really happen, right? Okay. So I wanted it, I wanted it. And then um, the first time there was an opportunity, and I was involved in the church choir and we would do the you know, Christmas shows and all of that, but the first time there was an opportunity for me to audition, was my freshman year in high school, and that was it. And every show yeah, I could lay my hands on were, after that. Yeah, yeah. But and I like. Um, unfortunately, sometimes when you're working as an actor, it is very hard to get out and see other shows and expose yourself to that. And, sure. and I haven't done as, any work as an actor for a while, so I have the luxury of getting out to the to see the other shows. I also think that it's very important. I want to do it for myself personally, but I also think it's very important for me as the representative of Kumukuhua Theater to be there. Support them. And to support the rest of the theater community. Do they do that for you? Oh, yeah, we see a lot. We see yeah. a lot of So it's a whole community of people involved in creating theater. And, you know, I, I always wondered, um, and I don't have a, my own answer for this, maybe you, have, you can help me. What, what is it that you want to do when you're up on stage? What is it that you're, you know, want to do when you're the director? When you want to, you know, you're part of the ensemble that creates this thing uh, that touches people. What, what is it that you want to do? What, why does it? Why did you want to jump up on the stage on, on, on uh, uh, what was it? Uh, in showboat. Showboat. <laughs> what, what is it that keeps you doing this? Um. It's different. It's like my dad used to say, what gets you married is not what keeps you married. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> it's, it's, the same. it's the same thing. So uh, the way I feel about it, that was a good question. Okay, thank you for that. We just had one of those moments I love having on my show. Uh, when I work on stage, it is, an. Uh, first of all, it... Uh, I make the decision to be a part of the, to want to be a part of the show because of the story. I read the story and it speaks to me somehow. And one of the characters, sometimes a couple of the characters while I'm reading it will resonate with me and I want that, uh, for me, I want the challenge of playing that role. I love playing roles that are really hard to play. And I don't... Why? Because it, it makes me grow. It's you outside your own self. Yeah, it you, makes, you're expanding your mm, own self. It's inside, Jay. Ah, you're it finding makes me peel things inside. Away some stuff because okay, we're okay. all capable of everything that is out there within. All the of humanity is all of humanity. It's all in there, <laughs> and exploring that. What a wonderful way to explore that. And again, therapy. Mm -hmm. It's it's a tonic experience. Yeah, and. There's a, there's a lot of training that goes into harnessing that and making sure you don't get lost and making sure that your therapy is not um, wasting someone else's time. You know, you are, it's the story first. But uh, it's an honesty thing too, right? It's, it's, you're finding something yes. real. That is a sort of real common denominator thing that lives in all of humanity and you're going to find it and show it. Yeah. Why would I react this way? The playwright is telling me that I say this, 
it's crazy. Why would I react that way? But we are all just operating under the same basic tenets of human nature, which is, I want to feel safe, I want to feel loved, I want to be a part of the clan. Okay, so now you're part of the clan, you're part of the ensemble, you're finding the, the message within you. What about the guy in the front row? What are you trying to do for him? Are you trying to show him what you've learned about you? Are you trying to show him what he needs to learn about him? What are you trying to do mm. for him? I, as an actor, am not thinking about him at all. Ah. My, I, I'm, I'm here, you know. The, the, but you, we also always remember the basic constructs of I have to speak loud and loudly enough that the guy in the back row can hear me. I have to not upstage the other people that I'm working with. I have to remember my blocking. I, ha I try not to spit on the front row. <laughs> um, we have to remember all of those things, but outside of that, there's a fourth wall. Boom, I don't, I'm not thinking about them. One of the scariest things in the world as an actor to be on stage with is another actor who is an audience looker. Someone you know will, will come backstage after the first scene and say, oh, John so-and-so is here. I don't want to know that you were not with me on the stage. Right. You were looking at someone in the right. audience. That's that means really, your focus was not where it should It's be. like you go to a party and you talk to somebody, they're looking over your shoulder. Oh, so-and-so yeah. is here. And you can never engage with that person. Yeah. Such a turnoff. It's so dishonest. Yeah. Dishonest, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, it, so you're creating a work, you know, in the French uh, oeuvre. And the oeuvre is the ensemble. And there's a, there's a container around you a protective shield where you, you do this, it, it's sort of the magic of the moment, yeah. and it's for you. It's for me and it's for the other actors. I'm making sure that I am absolutely present for you. And, and that those are the actors that you want to work with, that we're here for each other. And if you drop something, whether it's a prop or a line, I'm with you because I'm with you. I'm hearing what you're saying and I'm reacting to what you're saying within the realm of reality of these characters. The ultimate team play. Oh, yeah. More than football, even. <laughs> I don't know from football, but I'm telling you. <laughs> yes, it's definitely a team. It is a team sport and the best shows, the best shows that I've seen or have had the privilege of being a part of are those shows in which something does go wrong and whoosh, everything galvanizes behind that. We're all supporting everyone else. How does, that, how does that work? Something goes wrong. Now it's up to the ensemble to pick up the sticks. It's like somebody drops something, and, and the audience now is transfixed on that item. It's on the floor, it's on the stage, and everybody in the audience is, which one of the cast is going to find a way to pick up that thing, and how gracefully will it will it be done, right? Yeah, because <laughs> you know? no one is listening to Moliere's words until that thing is picked up. <laughs> true. Moliere's story is <laughs> nothing true. until that thing gets picked up. And I used to always tell, when I direct, I always tell my casts, be the hero. Who's going to be the hero tonight? Something is going to drop. Whether it's a line or a costume or a prop, something's going to drop, and don't let that thing, don't let... Moliere's words get wasted. So how, how, how much do you encourage them, or the director, you know, the director in Kumakahua, the style of director in Kumakahua, encourage them to just, uh, you know, make it up. Uh, I forget the term for that, but you know, when improvise? you- Improvise? Improvise, yeah. I mean, how much does that happen? How much do you want it to happen? Um, in rehearsals, <laughs> we're not an improv theater. You know, there, there's a script that is king. Um, in rehearsals, it depends on the director how much they want to play with that. I like to use I like to use improv for auditions as well as for the creation of the work. I like to work with an ensemble feel. Um, some directors don't at all. Some directors are going to say, "You're going to go here, and then on this line, you're going to turn to her, and then you're going to say this, and then you're going to go over here." And that's part of as an actor knowing for whom you are auditioning. They're both right. Yeah, it depends. Yeah. Yeah, it de what would, what the would you the theater prefer, is hiring though? that. What would you prefer, in your view of it? Oh, well, yeah, I like to be able to have some say in it. And recognizing that I know as an actor, I'm not the boss. I'm not, I don't have the ultimate say, but I like to be able to have some input. 
And after a while, although you're not the director, if you're an actor, you're not the director, you begin to get an idea of the director's view of the matter and his, you know, his, his vision for how the oeuvre is going to be executed. <laughs> oeuvre. <laughs> oeuvre. <laughs> She's really French. <laughs> well, you know, I'd like to see it all come together like in Ashland. I, Ashland, how it, I, I'd like to see um, Hawaii become known for its plays, known for its, uh, its playhouses. Awesome. And I'm, I'm very encouraged by knowing you and by talking with you. Oh. This is the first time we've actually talked like this, and really? I appreciate it. <laughs> I appreciate you, J. Fidel, and this forum, the opportunity to do this. It's really Thank cool. you. That's Donna Blanchard. She's the uh, director of the Kumukahua Theater down, down the road here. And uh, she's also um, the host of our show on Wednesday afternoon called The Arts in Hawaii, where she covers everything in the arts of Hawaii. So I've really enjoyed this conversation. I hope you can do it again. I'm perfectly willing any time, you know what I mean? Okay. <laughs> just, just let me know. I'm here. Aloha, Donna. Aloha.